det oskyldiga barnets död och min hämnd. Du tillät det. Jag förstår dig inte. But this is a god, then why, why is there so much evil in the world? Well, just on a simplistic level, why, why were there Nazis? Tell him, Max. How the hell do I know why there were Nazis? I don't know how the can opener works. Oh, come on. You mind me? Nonsense, anyway. What are you putting everyone through this mumbo jumbo? Bring on the main course. I apologize for my disrespectful sister. Come on, this is the 20th century. You have young boys sitting here. Don't fill their heads with superstition. Oh, the, the intellectual, the school teachers. Please, Spare us your, your, your Leninist philosophy just this once. What, you're afraid if you don't obey the rules, God's going to punish you? Yeah, he won't punish me, mate. He punishes the wicked. Oh, who? Like? Hitler? Maybe. How do you say that? Six million Jews burned to death and they got away with it. How did they get away with it? Six how? Oh, come on, Sal, open your eyes. Six million Jews and millions of others, and they got off with nothing. How could human beings do such a because thing? Because might makes right. Men han tyr. Jag ropar till honom i mörkret. Men ibland är det som det inte fanns någon där. Det kanske inte finns någon där. Men du har levande den orimliga fasa. I never told you the last words that Colleen said before they let her die. She said, see. Then her eyes glazed a bit. And then she said, swing away. You know why she said that? Because the nerve endings in her brain were firing as she died. And some random memory of us at one of your baseball games just popped into her head. There is no one watching out for us, Meryl. We are all on our own. I see my brother. True. Kind. He died when he was 19. world's gone to the dogs. People are greedy. Keep getting worse. And then, years later, I try to get into their hands. Drifting back into the same swamp. Hey, Dad. I'm sorry I said what I said. I... Yeah, you know, I think about him every day. I just shouldn't have said what I did, and I'm sorry. No, it's just all this day. What are you thinking? I know, I know you did everything you could. And only two of those were turned on by the client. One of go on. I don't know that it must, Harry, but it certainly does. I'm sorry, Jack. Thank you, Chris. We're all deeply sorry, Chris. Thank you, President. Anything I can do? Yes, sir. Uh, just don't tell me it's all for the best, that's all. Only God knows why these things have to happen. God knows, but does God care? Of course. We see so little here. We are not the creator. No. no. We're the creatures, aren't we, really? They? With the rats in the cosmic laboratory. I've no doubt that the experiment is for our own good, but uh, it still makes God the vivisectionist, doesn't it? 
Jack. No! Won't do. It's this bloody awful mess, and that's all there is to it. Yesterday, I received a letter that referred to an event that took place almost a year ago now, December the 4th, 1951. My correspondent hadn't forgotten. I doubt if any of us have. That was the night a number one bus drove into a column of young Royal Marine cadets in Chatham and killed 24 of them. You remember? Now, the letter asks some simple but fundamental questions. Where was God on that December night? Why didn't he stop it? Isn't God supposed to be good? Isn't he supposed to love us? And does God want us to suffer? What if the answer to that question is yes? So I'm not sure that God particularly wants us to be happy. I think he wants us to be able to love and be loved. He wants us to grow up. I suggest to you that it is because God loves us that he makes us the gift of suffering. Or to put it another way, pain is God's megaphone to rouse a deaf world. You see, we are like blocks of stone out of which the sculptor carves the forms of men, the blows of his chisel, which hurt us so much, are what make us perfect. 